maybe just tell us about how the norms were introduced, um, in what context, and then what, what, what was the framing of this? Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, I started in eighth grade and then all throughout high school at a school that really believed in these progressive ideologies that we talk about. And it was pretty clear the way they taught this in something like, for instance, in English class, we'd have a book talking about a person of color's experience with racism. We'd get TED Talks shown to us. This is what's racist. This is what you shouldn't say. And then all of the questions on that book would be about what's wrong in society. I remember also in history class, I think a shining example is we were shown Donald Trump's State of the Union address and every few seconds, the teacher would pause it and say, okay, this is what he really means. And it was always dissecting every line to mean something like, he said freedom of religion, but actually he means that he's supporting the Christian religion and he wants to force Christianity on all of America. We were just taught this through the lessons and we had several hours a week of community service. We had community events every Friday where we'd watch documentaries and break down all of these topics. And it felt, this is a problem you need to wake up about. You need to realize that this is bad. It's hurting people. If you say a bad word, well then it influences bad ideas and then it's making a bad society. That's the end of the world. I would love it for you to explain. Um, you can just summarize it. What what it does to a child to get a diagnosis at all, and what you know, you obviously thought it or didn't have any reason to believe it was false at the time, but then you over time realized like it felt like that uncomfortable shirt, you know, that just was painful mm -hmm. to wear. What what would you like to say to parents out there who are facing, um, or or kids for that matter, who are facing down a mental health culture now being put into the schools at younger and younger ages where they're now going to screen 100% of the students for mental health problems starting in kindergarten. They're going to start in kindergarten screening every kid. What potential harm comes if they misdiagnose a kid, in your opinion, having been through it? I think it's really important to remember that diagnoses are not benign and they don't mean, oh, he's just different. Having, I was misdiagnosed with autism and I was around people who truly were very far on the spectrum and I was just a little bit socially awkward. But the friends I'd made had some pretty visibly clear challenges. And it caused my self esteem to drop because I started believing that I also couldn't function. It isolates uh, kids from opportunities they might need. They won't get the same enriching curriculum. And while my friends needed to be around people like them, I needed to talk to more extroverted people. Training people to believe that they're incapable will usually backfire if you're helping issues that don't exist. And there's also the risk of people being put on medications that they don't need. And, the health effects of that. Usually, uh, sometimes doctors will even ignore harmful side effects that are uh, clearly happening to a child because they believe anxiety is the most important thing to fix. I was on meds I didn't need for seven years, and I still feel foggy. Did you get the impression that pursuit of anything resembling objective truth was on the agenda at school ever? I... Uh, felt that the objective truth that they were pushing was their views and what they believed was right. But something like any set of rules that uh, was not newly invented, uh, like even in math classes, you would, one of my last math teachers was saying that she would actually talk to the kids about why they would think that two plus two equals five to try and understand them instead of simply correcting them, which started to really worry me. There was never any sense of standards. I mean, we were graded, but the level of grading we got was very minimal. And things like I 
the most shining example of this was me getting a really high score on one of the SAT type of tests. And when I was handed the results back by my college counselor, the way she presented them to me is, you know, they're just completely stuck up and snooty people for thinking that you doing good on this test means that you are also smart. And this score doesn't actually matter. And by the way, please don't tell your friends that you did well. <laughs> the next thing I want to ask is, you know, I've asked you, you know, felt anger and so on, but that's towards the adults. What about your peers? What can you tell us about the peer group um, beyond what you've already said? Is there anything else you'd like us to know about how much is going on peer to peer in this realm of, you you know, it's important to fit in by being different? I think the most important thing that I've witnessed that a lot of others writing about this are missing is that this is really being driven by the students. That doesn't mean that they're right, but they are the ones that hold power. I've seen teachers push against the norms and students would get very angry with that and it would eventually, uh, either the teacher would be forced to agree or the teacher would just end up leaving the school. 